And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the newest game in the Dice Tower Essentials line, and that's Critical Mass. Now, Critical Mass currently is coming in two different sets. It's a one versus one game, although if you get multiple sets, you can play multi-players, um, but you can mix and match these mechs against each other, and more mechs will be coming out in the future. So here we have Ragin vs. Archon, and here we have Patriot vs. Iron Curtain. So this game, just to clarify things, is a Dice Tower Essential. Dice Tower Essentials is a line of games that I worked with Arcane Wonders for several years, the first being Sheriff of Nottingham, in which I found a game that I really like, I really like them, I bring them to them and they publish them. They don't bring the games to me, I find the games, they publish them, we work together, it's a collaborative process, but going in, you already know that every game in this line I think is fantastic, and so let's take a look now at this newest one, I'm really excited about it. So in this game, you're going to be picking a mech. Rage on an Archon or Patriot and Iron Curtain. These are the different sets that they come in. And the mech that you take, you'll take the board for that mech. So this is the Patriot board. Um, each of these mechs has four uh, critical components. Thrusters, Control Center, Weapon Mount, Main Reactor. You'll see they're different for each of the mechs. One of them even has a force field. So you pick a mech. So I'm going to pick here, for example, Rage in. And once I've picked this mech, I'm going to fill up his critical components here with the, essentially these are your shields here, guarding those critical components. So you're going to fill these up. They're going to be slightly different for each of the mechs. You also have two yellow cubes here that you're going to put near your primed. Everyone has a primed um, ability, which starts off, and then a special ability. In this case, it's off by default. And these can go on or off over the course of the game. Each of the players is also going to take a set of cards. Everyone has an evade, activate, and recharge, but everything after that might be a little different. So you're going to be looking at the techs. You're going to start with the tech one cards, but you're also going to have tech twos and tech three cards. And again, you're going to pick the set for you. So actually, this is my set for this one. So I have an evade and activate recharge, a light laser, medium laser, and a phoenix talon. That's stuff I'm going to start with. I also have the ability over the course of the game to get grappling cables, leaping evade, burning Kazatachi, a Nikode Blade, a Scorcher, and a Storm Lance. There's, those are both level, they're level 2s and level 3 techs. Players also will choose from a big pile. Big pile comes in each box of extra cards that you can pick from to add to the possible cards you can get from text two and three. The cards in each of the boxes, there's a few crossover cards that show in each box, but for the most part, these are very different cards in here. So once you have both boxes, you can mix and match. When you pick your mech, you can look on the back of your mech and it will tell you what cards you start with in your hand, what cards start uh, face down in a deactivated pile next to you, your customization, so you can choose, like for example, this mech can take two weapons, one equipment, and any two cards from tech two, one defense, one weapon, and any two cards that are choice from tech three. And then if you're not sure which ones to pick, it gives you some exact ones that you can pick to start the game. And so, once players have built their decks, they're going to start with a pile of cards. They're going to start with their starting hand, and most of the mechs get to start with a level 2 tech in their hand. One of them gets to start with an extra tech, and the rest go in their deactivated pile. Now, once players have done this, the game is going to begin. And on player's turn, they're going to each pick a card from their hand, and they're going to play that card at the same time and reveal them. The card that has the higher number in the top left hand corner is going to go first with lightning bolts going before everything else. So you can see this card here activates a pretty slow card while this evade is really fast. Now evade is pretty easy. Most of the time if you play this card you're going to avoid the attack from your opponent. Activate here is a chance to get more cards from your deactivated pile. So you'll be able to pick up that pile, go through it, and add one of those cards to your hand. So it's a way to get cooler weapons and better things. And when you use Activate, you'll turn on your Prime. The next time you use Activate, you'll turn your Prime off and then you can pick a level 3 tech. At the, usually you can only pick a level 2. 
When you play your cards, they're going to go into a cooldown pile, which means you don't have a chance to use them again until you play your activate card, which lets you, I'm sorry, not your activate, your recharge card, which lets you pick up all the cards back into your hand. So you have to pick the right time to play your recharge card because you can play this and your opponent might be shooting you at the same time. So there's an evade card and other defensive cards as the game goes by, but when two players both play a weapon against each other, the faster one is going to go first. So here the medium laser is going to go before the heavy laser. And it's going to disrupt the other weapon unless there's a way to not be disrupted, which means this one's not going to even happen. This then will do two damage. Otherwise, this one would have done three damage to the, uh, my opponent. When you do damage to your opponent, you just, let's say I do two damage, I can take one of these off here from them, from the weapon mount, because those are worth two each, or I could have taken off two from the control center here since those are one each. I couldn't have even touched the main reactor and thrusters unless I can do three or four damage. When the last cube comes off a section, that section is destroyed and something happens here. So this says when this component is destroyed, deactivate one of your tech two cards. <laughs> That's not good. I have to put a card here. When this one's destroyed, deactivate my evade. I can no longer evade. That's a terrible thing. When this one is destroyed, I'm stunned. I can't play a card next turn. So you have to be very careful to be avoid that sort of thing. Different ones have special abilities. For example, when this, one, when this guy plays a dodge to avoid attack, he can turn this on, and now all his weapons are plus one speed. If he ever takes damage, though, it comes off. That's because Ragin is all about close combat. And really, there is a huge amount of different cards. You can add jump jets that you can dodge with. Here, lightning servos. You put this down, this is a piece of equipment. You just put it in front of you, it stays in play. Your opponents can blow it up if they want to with damage, but until they do, all your weapons get plus one speed. Surge protector targeting system, weapons boosters, all kinds of cool guns, EMP emitters, uh, flame rockets here. Look at this thing, it does three damage and it can't be disrupted so it's always going to hit your opponent. Uh, homing missiles here, unavoidable, can't be dodged and does three damage. Let's jump down to the level three weapons, the Hellfire Cannon. It's fast and it's unavoidable. We got the Molecular Disruptor, a Shocker here that does four damage, a Snapshot Laser, Talladega Missiles, and all kinds of really cool things. A Flamethrower, let's see here, EMP Blasters, Flamestore Cannons, Tesla Coils, there's really just a, a wide variety of cards. And you're going to have to get to know your opponent. Like this guy here wants to get in close and do damage. Um, while some of them have a lot of guns. Like the, the Iron Curtain himself has this humongous, powerful guns that he'll be shooting at the opponent. The first person to completely destroy all four of these is the winner of the game. Now, you can play multiplayer if you buy two or more boxes. When this happens, you will be given a target you're going to be the person that you're going after and so there's, there's cards included for that purpose also. The boards themselves have the slots to put the cubes in. I really like that. Uh, the artwork itself, the cards are great. I like how they're really they're quality cards with the linen finish. They might be a little darker like this one here. It, maybe the red is not always so easy to read on the black, but other than that, they're pretty easy to see. Most of the time you're just looking at these two stats and the special abilities. And there's a lot of special abilities on cards, but because you're only playing a certain number of cards per game, you really don't use a lot of cards in these games, so it's pretty easy to quickly memorize what your opponent has. If they have a powerful weapon, you'll learn about that weapon really fast. These cubes here, the gray cubes, I like that they're kind of you know, have this molten look to them. So that's a nice thing. And like I said, they fit in there fine. And everything fits fine in the box. And in fact, uh, if you take out the insert, you can fit everything from both sets in one box. Now, if there's anything I would say negative about the game is that I, as with many of these type of games, I don't care about the multiplayer aspect. I don't care playing, but I, that's, that's a personal preference. I feel that way about Star Realms and Summoner Wars and all these other games. You can play it and the people who play it like it, but I like this as a one-on-one. -on -one. I really like this game because it's essentially just an outguess your opponent and it's with a, with a wee smidge of deck building. At the beginning, you have these mechs, and they're very different. I think my favorite is Ragin, the one I showed you, because I like that he has you know claws pulling the opponent closer and trying to hit him, but also he's very easily damaged because his you know those close combat weapons are powerful, but they're slower. But I like that you can sit there at the beginning of the game and you pick like four or five cards to add to your thing. That's it. 
You're not making this huge deck, me versus you. So, you know, it's not like I'm going to sit around deck building all the time. I sit there and say, here's my mech. I add a few cards to it. I don't know what to add. Just pick the ones on the back of the, the thing. They're, they're usually pretty well chosen. And if I don't like something, I'm like, ah, that, I didn't use this card very much. Fine. The next game, I'll switch it out. But just, what are you going to do? So, so we got kind of in a rhythm. When I play uh, one of my opponents, Jason, the very first thing we do each turn is we, you know, we're activating. We're both getting a new piece of equipment. Well, I know he's going to activate on turn one. So maybe that's a turn I should nail him with a gun when he's not ready for it. But now he knows that I'm going to probably shoot, use a gun on the first turn. And I know he knows that, so I'm not going to use a gun. But I know that he knows that I know that. So I'm actually going to play the activate card anyway. But I know that he knows that I know that it, and it can go on forever. And that's really what this game is about. And then just working with your mechs. As far as I can tell, the mechs here are very, very balanced. They all have a chance to win. And there's really no luck in the game. You have the cards in your hand. You have to try to figure out the best time. And it's basically about reading your opponent. When are they going to attack me? What weapon do they have? They have that really annoying you know, piece of equipment, should I destroy it or should I just keep hammering on the mech itself? I've always liked mech versus mech battles, right? They're often very complicated and long. This one's very short, very easy, and just gives that cool, neat feeling of shooting your weapons and going back and forth. And games in this can take 15 minutes, uh, 30 minutes maybe at the most, I guess, if you're really taking a long time. And then you can just play it again. Very big fan. I like the fact that you can mix and match the stuff from both of them together. I look forward to seeing new mechs join the fray as time goes by. But you could get one of these and have a really great time with it. You get two and you more than double your fun because you can mix and match the cards in between them. Really fun game. I'm obviously a little biased, but when I found this game, I didn't design it. I found this game three years ago. That After like five minutes, I was like, I love this game. And I still, years later, am still enjoying it and glad to see it in print. Definitely get it. Critical mass. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent.